Welcome to VEX 101. In this video, we're going to be talking about flat bearings. We're going to talk about flat bearings, uh, the different ways we can use them, some of the modifications we can do to them, uh, and then how to test them to make sure they are exactly doing what they're supposed to be doing. All right, so we're going to look at positioning and kind of setting them up. Uh, let's say this is our chassis, uh, and then we've got this going. We like putting it on the inside here, uh, and that way we have as least obstruction on the outside. Sorry, least obstruction on the inside here. Uh, we've got that these smooth screws on the inside, and then we've got these on the outside here. So we'll go ahead and put our caps nuts on there. So two different screws, and one of the easiest ways to kind of assemble this is I just put my, my big chubby finger right there, and we take a, uh, a nut wrench, and this is a 1132 nut wrench. We got these off of RoboSource. Uh, and then I just take, and I just start squeezing down, and I don't squeeze it too tightly. Um, we'll talk about in a second why we don't squeeze it down too tightly, but we just go get those in, and then that's set. And one of the things you want to look at is you want to make sure you can see in there, there's this little black little nubs that were part of the flat bearing. And we want to make sure those sit inside of that square. Otherwise, this will be off center. Let me see if I can do it on purpose. And just because it's tight does not mean that it's centered in there. You can see those little black nubs are actually out of the space. And what that's going to do is that's going to cause extra friction. One of the things you want to consider every time we're working with, uh, with a joint that rotates, if it's rotating, if it's a joint, if it's going to pivot in any way, we want to try our best to put a flat bearing in there. What that's going to do is that's going to protect the metal. Um, so when we have an axle, the axle is going to be moving around. And if it was inside of a square like this, it would bounce around and it'd have too much space. And these bearings allow it to move smoothly in a circle. It's just bigger than the axle providing smoothness. And that's one of the things you can kind of see that this is smoothly rotating inside of there. Some flat bearings have been uh, severely used. You can see those kept nuts marks on there. And if we stick an axle in there, right, this one conveniently is, you know, nice and smooth. This one's smooth. But you want to double check that, that it is actually going to be as smooth as you want it to be. And you aren't uh, working with a, a damaged or, uh, you know, mutilated flat bearing, you want to make sure that it is set up uh, and hasn't been squashed completely. So this one right here, it's got both of these. I would always prefer to use this hole since both of these have been used. And that way I know that it's real nice and smooth and I can just put those caps nuts right back on there. So here's a C channel that has, uh, has seen better days. Uh, it's incurred a good bit of damage. Uh, we've got this kind of circled out. These are no longer squares and you can see that. And that was from an axle. Uh, so if you look at this one and this one, this one's a complete circle, uh, but these two, right, there may have been a flat bearing, it may have come loose, and from all that movement, it started going back and forth in that, and the axle just ate away at the material, which is going to make your joint a little bit sloppier. You're going to have all the gears um, not interlocking like you want it to. All right, so there's a configuration for your flat bearing. Obviously, if you needed to, you could put it on the inside, uh, but most of our situations, specifically with the chassis, you're going to want to put it like this. Uh, on your tower, you want to do it like this, that way, because that way, this is on the inside. You want it as smooth as possible when you put your gears in there so the gears don't have anything to interact with or anything to hit. Uh, they're not going to hit any caps nuts that are out there. You've got clearance. Um, even if it was a wheel, you've got clearance. You don't have any caps nuts or even long screws like this one. When attaching flat bearings to the chassis and there's going to be a motor on the other side, make sure that you put the motor offset from the flat bearing. Uh, so when you put that flat bearing on with the motor on the other side, make sure it's offset so that if you need to tighten uh, the motor, you can actually go through the wheels. Most of these wheels have spaces that you can go straight through and you can tighten those motors without having a, a flat bearing in the way. Another thing to consider is that flat bearings don't have to just go on this rail or the middle rail. Uh, they can go on the outsides here. Uh, but if you're trying to get them into these corners here, uh, into this little edge right here. You're going to have to do something special. We're actually going to have to take this over to the grinder and we cut away. And the easiest way to cut away is you look at where the top of this inside square is and you want to cut that much away, just about that much. Uh, and you just put it in the grinder upside down like this and you will smooth out that section. And that'll allow you to take this, still maintaining its integrity, uh, and then you can put it inside there. It actually will snap in because right here, if I went to try putting that in, like we talked about earlier, it's not going to meet up inside those holes. 
and that way we're going to have added friction to our system. We're going to add friction to our system if that's not completely seated in there. So we'll have to shave that down just a little bit, put that in there. You could also take a Dremel and smoothly grind away that outside and stick those in there. So we've used flat bearings for a lot of things. Uh, we can actually get them into uh, pretty good spots and do some multiple uses for them. Um, one of them is going to be to attach rubber bands. And so you put some spacers on there, you put some spacers on there, and then you attach this and you put two screws in this. And now we have a raised section, a raised hook, if you will, that you can put a rubber band in there and it'll pull straight back. On our lift, these are also really good to put on the outside. Um, so when our lift arm is moving up, if we have a hard stop in the back, uh, we like to take this and have this be one of the things that contacts it uh, as it's going up. And so it'll boom, it'll hit this. Easiest way to kind of add a little bit of padding, a little bit of protection for the metal as it's coming up. So this is going to hit instead of it's going to be metal against metal every time. And one of these is going to be a little more damaged than it would be if we had this protecting it. In that situation, if you don't want to add uh, metal screws on there, if you're using this as a bumper, you can always zip tie. Put a zip tie in there. Some people try doing this to uh, save weight. Instead of using all those screws, they zip tie their flat bearings. Um, it's, I haven't seen good results with that, um, but you know, that tightened in there with a zip tie would also be good because now we don't have metal in there as it's coming back and it's hitting our hard stop. Uh, and that will bop up against this without causing too many problems.